G'day guys, my name is Christopher and welcome to an art adventure. So today we're going to be colouring this uh, illustration of a cicada on leaves. And if you're interested in the process of the illustration and how to draw better, uh, my previous video shows the creation of this drawing and the tips to draw better. And so I'll either try to link it up in the video or I'll place a link in the description for you to check out. So I'm starting off this piece with colour pencils and my original intention was actually to draw the entire uh, drawing in colour pencils and to build up um, slowly layer by layer some vibrancy and depth and I thought that this paper would be suitable for it if I used um, some solvent to um, break down the pigment or spread out the pigment but it turns out that this paper is not great for colour pencil work. It works fine for watercolours and actually it's really great for that. I've used it a lot and I've also used it with watercolours and then used colour pencils on top but I never actually just used pencils only on it and so that was a bit of a mistake and I'd really recommend anytime that you're trying out some new paper especially if it's a slow medium like pencils that you just do a test first to see if it's going to, to work well. And even though I'm going to give this my best shot by doing many, many layers, I think at least six layers of pencils in most places, I realize that it's just not going to blend eventually. But here I'm still first on the first or second layers of pencil work. And just when you're starting off, um, with pencils, all you really need to do is try to get an even coverage and block in the major um, colours and try not to have too many scratchy lines. Um, it can depend a little bit on the brand of pe pencils that you're using. And for the base colours here, I'm using Van Gogh colour pencils. They're artist quality and light fast. They're made in Japan. And I got them fairly cheaply when I was living in Japan. Um, it's a 60-something odd set, but they might be difficult to get elsewhere. I haven't seen them too commonly elsewhere. And I don't think that they sell them in open stock either, which is also a problem. Later on, I'll be using my Faber-Castell polychromos pencils. And these are also light fast and usually pretty easy to get both as sets and open stock worldwide. But those pencils, even though they're, they're superb, the, the polychromos pencils are fairly hard and it can be even more time consuming using them for those first um, layers. And so if you can find a creamier pencil to do initial layers, that's a great idea. You'll also see periodically that I pour out some fluid and then use my paintbrush to paint over the colour pencils, which then spreads out the pigment. This is um, Mineral Spirits, and I'm using one from Holbein that I bought in Japan called Melts. But a common one to get in the US at least is the um, Mona Lisa Odalis Mineral Spirits. And you can get that in quite large quantities on Amazon and other places. But you only need small amounts at a time. And whether or not it's odorless, it's toxic to be breathing it in. So only pour out small amounts at a time. Try to have an open ventilated area while you're working and to air out that room and to dispose of um, or seal up anything that you're, that you're not using quickly. And so you could see some of it just being spread out there. Now here is a close-up of some of the pencil work where you're getting an idea of this paper just being too grainy and too toothy to work on. It is um, ab advertised as medium watercolour paper. It's by Cotman. Um, it's in a B5 size, which is a system of paper sizing used in Japan. But even though it felt smooth or feels fairly smooth and when I've used it for watercolour it comes out fairly smooth, it is clearly far too rough for using 
um, color pencils with. And so I'm starting to figure that out now. And I'll just still persist for a few more layers to see what I can do because I've already committed to this drawing so far. But eventually I'm going to have to uh, try a new technique, which I'll show you when we get to there. At the moment, you're starting to see some of the contrast develop, um, particularly for the main leaf shapes and their veins, but also a little bit within the cicada itself. And uh, this has to do with both the body segments of the cicada and also a large amount of the wing showing and the patterns for the wing venation. Here you can see some of that um, mineral spirits being placed on again, trying to, to spread out the pigment. And again, it's working to some degree. It's just not giving me the effect that I'm hoping to achieve. And so I'll keep persisting, trying to get a smoother um, build up. And even if the paper was good, I would still expect to have to do five or more layers of color pencils. They are a slow medium and you have to be patient and build them up layer by layer, but their beauty comes in the fact that the layers are slightly transparent and the vibrancy builds up as you add layer upon layer. And you can get some really amazing effects just by using color pencils. It's also a fun experiment if you haven't tried it before to try to do a fairly monochromatic piece or to try to just stick to one or two major colors and to see what you can achieve within that color family. So clearly this drawing is focusing on the colored green, but I'm also using the complementary color um, orange, which is actually the, the natural colors of the cicada to give pops and draw um, interest to the eye as, as it's working along. The lighting just changed there because I took a break and came back later at night and I worked on and off on this piece for actually a couple of days. Um, probably each layer is taking about an hour overall or a bit under an hour to apply, especially the first couple of layers. So this uh, video is sped up greatly. Um, some segments anywhere from a thousand times to something like 3000 times the actual speed because there's just so many layers and the pencil work is quite slow. Some of the lighter layers, I actually do like the effect that I'm achieving. For example, the sections just left and right above the cicada's head where it's the, the lighter pale uh, yellowy green colors, I am able to get a fairly smooth um, lay down of color happening and the colors are blending quite well together. But the more I'm adding depth and darker colors to the leaves and the cicada's body, the more difficult I'm finding it to, to smooth things out. Whereas if it was a very smooth paper like Archer's hot press watercolor paper or something like that. Um, by this stage, I would be getting quite a smooth result, at least for the way that I work normally. So you can see here the colors are darkening a lot on the leaves, but they're still a little bit grainy or too, too grainy for what I'm trying to achieve. So Eventually, I'm actually going to try something new. I looked online to see if anyone had tried it before, and that is to add watercolors after color pencils. It's really common for people to use watercolors and then as a mixed media piece, add colored pencils on top of their watercolor work, um, either in small areas or on, in large sections. But to do the reverse, I'd never really seen done before and there are some issues with it but um, in this piece I'll be starting with color pencils obviously and then switching to putting watercolor paints on top of that once I realize that I can't quite get to the level of smoothness that I'm going for and here you can see my palette being set up to try and do that and 
immediately there's a strong difference in the smoothness and the richness of the leaves. I probably went too far trying to to blend everything out fully and I probably should have stopped a little bit earlier than when I actually did. Um, particularly for the leaves that are on the bottom left, I find eventually I think I make them too dark for, for what I was trying to do. But it's certainly an uh, interesting first experiment and overall I'm happy with how the piece eventually turns out. If I could go back and do it again, I'd probably stop somewhere close to around this layer of watercolours and um, that means only one or two layers of watercolours on top of the colour pencil work. It might vary uh, depending on the kind of paper that you're using and that's what's caused me the problems for this artwork, but um, it's certainly something worth investigating and trying out. And I'm not sure how light fast the, the work will be, but certainly the paint amazingly doesn't rub off or doesn't um, pull away. Uh, it sticks and um, holds onto the paper just fine on top of the colour pencils, which I was really quite surprised at. Okay, so here you can see I'm finally moving on to the focal piece, the cicada itself, and adding in some of the finer detail. Um, again, I haven't worked in this way before of colour pencils and then watercolours on top of it. And so it's a big learning curve in trying to figure out um, how detailed I can get, what sort of contrast I can build up, and um, what exactly is the technique that I'm trying to develop here. And so fortunately, um, if I do make errors just with normal watercolour paper, I am able to use a, a damp, clean brush and lift away sections, even though that the colour pencil has been laid down, the colour pencil stays and the watercolour lifts away. So I'm pretty happy with what I end up achieving for the cicada's body, the main green parts of the cicada, but the wings, um, I don't quite get to the point that I'm trying to to hopefully achieve, particularly for the wing venation. And I'll end up going back with the colour pencils once again and adding on to that. So it's going to be layers of colour pencil, then watercolour, then colour pencil again on, in sections of this piece. If I could go back in time, this is probably the section that I would probably not do uh, over again. It's where I'm adding more watercolour on top of the leaves again and it's just not quite getting the effect that I'm hoping for and I'll persist with it a few times but it doesn't just quite work out the way that I'd wanted to and I think I like the effect before I, I switched to working on the cicada um, even better. So that was several layers of colour pencils, maybe five or six, and then one or two layers of watercolour paint only. I'm not sure how often I'll be doing this technique but it's in the future but it's good to know that um, it's something that I can try from time to time if I if I want to explore it. Here I'm going back with the pencils again. I'm hoping I can smooth things out on those leaves a little bit more but really if it's as smooth as it's going to, to get. And to finish this piece, I decided to um, truly go mixed media by using a Jelly Roll pen. This is the green silver edition. They start off with a green ink and then it becomes silver with just these faint green edges to them. And then a Copic um, multi-liner, I think it's 0 0.1, um, for doing the detail work on the cicada. For people who are interested, I'll list the materials that I've used in the description below. So it's getting towards the end of this um, illustration and as a final way to finish off, especially because some of the paint bled underneath the, the tape that I laid down, I use a silver um, Sharpie pen to be able to just neaten up the border 
and it matches well with the silver highlights placed on the outside borders of the, the leaves. So if you've ever tried this technique before of using colour pencils and then doing watercolours on top of it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you have any questions about how I've done this piece, feel free to um, ask them down below. It's also a huge help to my channel if you could stop to give me a like or a thumbs up and subscribe or ring that notification bell. I really appreciate it. And that'll be it for this piece. I'll show you the finished work and some close-up detail to finish off. And I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure.